All right, today's infrared sauna question is, are infrared saunas safe? Matt, I love your videos, but let's be serious. Are infrared saunas really safe for people fighting chronic disease? Is there something about them that we're going to find out later? What? <laughs> Our infrared, so basically our infrared sauna is safe. Well, I don't know, let's do, how many minutes do you want this video to be? And if I haven't keeled over and stopped breathing by the end of the video, I'd say they're pretty safe. <laughs> no, I'm just giving you a hard time. Um, it's a good question. A lot of people want to know this question. A lot of people doing alternative cancer therapies and different types of Lyme treatments, different types of um, uh, mold toxicity, um, uh, what do you call it? Just dealing with the effects of that stuff are using you know, saunas as part of their treatment protocol and having good success. Um, but I will say that there is some things that you should be aware of. There are some dangers out there, like if you're a person that is fighting cancer or something, I wouldn't get in a high EMF sauna. Uh, I just wouldn't do it. There is debatable research out there on what the threshold is for that to even be you know, harmful. But it, for somebody that's in that position, I just wouldn't take any chances. If you're going to use an infrared sauna for part of your treatment, I would use the lowest possible one that you can get. Preferably, you'd want to get something off the certified sauna list that I have vetted or someone with a bunch of different EMF meters or a lot of experience um, has previously tested. It's not something that you're going to be able to do for yourself the first day, um, especially if you're not in good health. Um, it sounds like you're asking for a family member, but I'm just guessing here. Um, but yeah, as a general rule, if you're in a sauna that's low VOC, and that's another thing that we should talk about, it's not just the EMF, right? Some of the sauna companies that put out VOC reports are literally having a company come in and they're taking bottles of air, they turn the sauna on and they take bottles of air from inside the sauna and they ship that to a lab and they test it and that's their VOC report. You want to be really careful of that if you're, you know, if you've got lung cancer or if you're... Uh, like my 94 year old grandfather, he is a retired World War II veteran, Silver Star awarded, I might add. Um, tons of good stories out of that one. Um, but he has basically just one lung. He's got emphysema, uh, he smoked, they were exposed to all kinds of stuff when he was overseas. Um, he's also got other issues. He used to be a paratrooper. Um, they used to ride in the B-52 bombers. And so there's, you know, there's all these things that contribute to um, exasperating probably nominal or minimal conditions that most people would have. But if your family member or if it's for you or for yourself is facing anything like that, what you want to do is just make sure that the stuff that you're breathing in or the electricity or the EMF uh, levels that you're around are just kept to a minimum so that you give your body the optimal environment to heal itself or to accomplish whatever it is that you're trying to do with your treatment. Uh, it varies from person to person. It just depends on what you're going for, what your issues are. Um, but what I would recommend is that you want to get saunas that have, if that is you, <clears throat> if, if, any of that, if any of that rings true for you, you want to get saunas that have a real VOC report where they're testing, you know, the lumber, any materials that are in the sauna, the panels, and testing the whole thing. And EMF stuff, you'll want to watch my videos and see why I do the EMF tests myself. You can't... Um, a lot of sauna companies have these fancy third-party EMF reports that they like to you know, email you and stuff. The issue with those is that they take a heater out of the sauna and they send it to a lab in another state and then they have that company test it. And then they certify it for a low EMF, right? But for starters, that's only one heater panel in a sauna that usually has eight, you know, six to eight panels. So that would be one-sixth or one-eighth of what's actually present. The other issue is that there can be EMF in the walls from the wiring that powers the heater. There can be EMF under the bench from the power supply. There can be EMF even in the lighting on the ceiling um, or even in the control panel. So it's very important that you test um, not only the real materials for VOCs, not just bottles of air like some companies. And you'll have to ask for this and they'll try to skirt around it. This is not going, they're not going to go down without a fight, if you know what I mean. Um, same thing with the EMF reports because you'll, you'll want to buy a sauna that has been tested in its complete operational state. You don't want to buy a sauna that has been taken apart or have these fancy pie graph, you know, third-party EMF reports that supposedly certify the sauna as low EMF when the you can see pictures in it of the, the, the heater hanging from a forklift in a lab. It's like, 
you know, people don't realize that they're getting the wool pulled over their eyes with this stuff, but when you're when you're dealing with loved ones, especially if they're elderly and they have chronic conditions and they're trying to improve, you want to be extra careful with this stuff or if it's children. If you're a relatively healthy person like I am, you really don't have to worry about too, too much. Get a fairly low EMF sauna, um, do your homework, do your due diligence, buy stuff that's reputable, um, and you'll be fine. Um, but as a general rule, our infrared sauna is safe. It depends on which ones you're talking about um, to really answer your question. Uh, I believe that they're safe. I use them all the time. No ill effects. If anything, it's improved my life uh, tenfold, um, and I highly recommend them. So if you are um, in the research phase still, you might find um, a list of saunas that you want to avoid on my blog, cleverleverage.com. Just go there, cleverleverage.com, and use the search box, type in infrared sauna reviews, and that'll pull up all the reviews from the saunas that I bought that you probably won't like because I sent them back or sold them or got rid of them or they just didn't work out. Um, what else? If you're in the market for a new sauna and you want something that I recommend, you'll want to do a Google search for the list of certified saunas. Um, that will bring up the sauna of the year for 2019 that I'm sitting in right now. It's a Radiant Health sauna. Make sure you watch the scam video though because they're impersonation or there are um, knockoff, you know how there's knockoff women's purses for like high-end $2,500 handbags or some stupid shit? Apparently now there are knockoff companies from China producing saunas under the Radiant name, selling them on Amazon, selling them on Walmart.com, all these other places. You want to make sure that you don't buy one of the fake ones because I tested one of them that's a ceramic model. You can see it on cleverleverage.com. I bought it um, and it is awful. It's got formaldehyde in it. Uh, it's something that you really want to stay away from. It's got 100 milligauss magnetic fields right at your head. I've got picture and video documentation of this. And yet in the Amazon listing when I bought it, it said low EMF, you know, certified safe or whatever, low VOC, low. They always claim to be low everything, right? It's not until you get it home, put it together, and it smells like adhesive that you're like, you know, how could you guys, we don't even have to test it. All I did was open the door and you're like, what? What did I buy? <laughs> you want to you want to strangle somebody, um, but yeah. As a general rule, if you're if you're dealing with high quality infrared saunas, uh, they are safe. Um, you can look at some reviews on some health forums. I think um, I can't remember the names of them. I think Phoenix Rising. Um, I don't know about Cure Zone. I hate Cure Zone website because it's hard to navigate, but there's probably some good inf info on there from older stuff. And uh, maybe I'll put out a video on infrared sauna benefits um, from some doctors and stuff. I don't usually make a lot of claims just because I'm not a doctor and I can't give medical advice. Um, but there are some healthcare professionals that have dug up some studies from overseas on sauna use, like Dr. Rhonda Patrick talking about um, how sauna use on a regular basis uh, reduces all-cause mortality. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, a lot of that has to do with increasing the, t the core temperature. Um, that can do wonderful things for the immune system. It can also um, kind of, I guess you, how would you say that? Squeeze out some bad bugs in a sense if you're able to get into a hyperthermic state. But you'll want to, you know, use caution if you're doing something like that. If a person is really ill or if they have low adrenal function or if they have chronic fatigue or things like that, I went through that. And certain stages of that, you can't do too much sauna because uh, it just wipes you out, you know, make you too tired. But you can work on, um, your, micronutri your micronutrients and your minerals, and you can also do some electrolyte supplements and then uh, get those adrenals pumping and you can tolerate more and more sauna therapy as you do it. That's what I had to do. I started off really small. But anyway, I don't wanna get into too much. I don't wanna bog you down with too much stuff in this video. Um, really, you just wanna know, are they safe? Yes, they're safe. Just make sure you're using a quality unit. So signing off for today, if there's something else you'd like to know or if you're looking for the rest of the reviews, go to cleverleverage.com and search for infrared sauna reviews. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you in tomorrow's video.